All right, it's Monday, April 4th, 2016. Just continuing update on the DIY project where I was going to take a Kindle Paperwhite front light and stick it onto my Sharp WGS30, uh, which is an e-ink notebook where you can uh, write inked notes and illustrations like this, which is kind of the spec design I was going for with the um, guide light. I had another illustration I was more detailed, but um, with the little complications in ripping out the pay the guide light from the Kindle, the LED system they were using on the Kindle is a little too complicated for me to rewire. So basically I took a uh, strip of LED lights that I would ordered on Amazon, which was right here, and basically this is a uh, LED lights that are powered by USB and it's supposed to be waterproof so it has like the silicone covering to it so basically I cut the last five LEDs off of this strip and cut it along these lines right here where they have the copper wiring exposed for you to uh, wire your own uh, connections if you wanted to shorten or, or lengthen this this rope of LED lights I removed this silicone uh, covering and then basically I wired that to a dimmer so I can turn the LEDs up and down in brightness and then that dimmer would connect to a USB connector which would in turn connect to an external hard drive. So the final product kind of looks like this uh, right here and as you can see this is the Kindle Paperwhite guide light right here. Um, and this bottom right here is the parts of part of the LED light strip and then I soldered in the wiring for this dimmer right here this dimmer I got on Amazon for like six bucks six seven bucks and then I used a, a, a glue gun to kind of cover up the leads to protect it from shorting out or you know uh, keep the line separate um, so this dimmer that's a cheap little dimmer um, it has different modes for flashing the LEDs, but I don't really need that. I just needed the ability to turn the lights up and down, which you can do with these two buttons right here. Um, you can turn, you hold on to this middle button to turn it off, and then you just press it to turn it on, and then you uh, push this one to dim down and push one, this one to dim up. And then that's uh, temporarily wired to a old USB cable that I just stripped for parts connected to this external uh, battery which I use for a cell phone I had a long time ago. Um, so if I were to turn on the battery, you can see the LEDs light up and right now I think they're dimmed down. So if I were to dim up, yeah, you can see the LEDs uh, blasting and then you can't really tell because the, the room is kind of bright right now but the edge of this light guide is kind of glowing because the light is kind of filled, uh, being channeled from the bottom of this this um, this film down to the ends. So all that worked out all right, I guess. Uh, it's not as I'll show you later, but it's not as bright as um, the actual Kinder, Kindle Paperwhite light guide. The built when it's built into the Kindle, it's not as bright the way I have it now um, and I don't know exactly why that is I don't know if um, they're, they're the if this they're, this was the screen protector that was actually on top of the light guide and this actually had the, a scratch on it um, but I don't know if that affects it or my thinking is that the glue that I actually stripped off of this film um, which was like a mess and made it all foggier or diffused the glue might actually work to transmit the light as well so that might be why it doesn't light up as bright as when it's on the actual Kindle um, but the, the bigger complication with this whole project is that the WGS 30 screen needs like I think it has maybe some kind of polarizer or something on it to where it needs light to hit it the screen at an angle and then reflects off and then you can see actually um, a better contrasty image so right now I have my desk lamp on 
and even though it's bright you can't tell necessarily that the uh, the desk lamp is shining a light on it but if i were to turn the disc lamp off you can already see that the the lines start get, get looking faded and the the whole screen kind of looks washed out with just the sunlight alone because the sunlight is so much more diffuse it's not directional but if i were to turn on this more directional led light the the i think the light rays are are actually hitting the screen and the screen has some kind of reflective uh backing to it to where it actually it'll bounce back up towards your eyes or something it makes it look more contrasty so you need light kind of at an angle hitting this this screen to actually make it uh, look good and the problem is that when I stick this LED light guide light guide film I think the light travels through and it either shine i think it filters through and then shines directly down onto the surface so you're not getting that angle um, that might be might be required by the wgs screen and basically it shows up black so let me go into the bathroom which is the darkest place i can i can go in, in this house and show you what it looks like when i put it on top of the wgs 30. all right so here we are in my bathroom um, sorry, I can't, I, I, since I'm continuing the recording, I can't adjust the exposure on the recording. But as you can see, this is the light guide on top of a piece of paper um, that has testing one through three, this writing on it just by ink. And you can see it actually lights it up fairly well. Um, it actually, uh, the, the camera's overcompensating. So, um, it actually is looking a lot brighter than it actually is uh, it, by the, the naked eye. Uh, but you can see the light guide is actually working and lighting up the, uh, the paper that's underneath. Um, so if I were to take away this paper, uh, or, or better yet, turn off the light guide, turning off the battery, you know, it's just completely dark. So this would be like reading in the dark, but with the light guide, it's actually legible. It's actually readable. The uh, WGS30 screen, however, obviously it's dark and you can't see anything. But if I were to take the uh, the guide light, see that? Put it on there, and it's still black. You can't see anything. <laughs> so. I th there's something with the way the light is going and hitting the screen on this guy light that just is not working with WGS30. It's just not um, the the way it works with the Pindor, uh, Kindle Paperwhite e-ink screen is just different. And so just to compare if I open up my Kindle Paperwhite, that's the actual Paperwhite backlight. Uh, I think I have a fairly low setting, but the, again, the camera is compensating so it looks bright. Um, but yeah, it, it looks great. It looks fine. Um, compared to this, this is just black. I can't see anything. But if you know, if you take the the LED and you hold it at an angle, or you know, you bring the light off to the side, you can start seeing that it, it's working. So the the light almost needs to be at a distance and at an angle to actually work. Whereas you can put this this DIY paper light that I made on any surface and it'll light it up and it becomes legible. So I have to rethink this whole thing, uh, it, it, it's kind of close to the, the end of what I might be able to do, but you never know. Inspiration strikes at any moment, so I might be able to uh, repurpose this whole setup in a new way to actually function on my WGS30. But WGS30 is great. I've been using it a lot, doing a lot of uh, journaling and whatnot. So a lot of a lot of times these DOA projects take me away from the actual writing and actual productivity in uh, with these devices. Uh, so I do have to get back to writing. Uh, but that's just an update so far.